From the tiny engines that power lawnmowers to the roaring V12 inside Ferraris, every engine layout has its strengths, weaknesses and quirks. Today, we're breaking down every engine layout and why car companies chose them. Whether you're trying to impress someone at a car meet or just figure out why your neighbor's Subaru sounds like a tractor having an existential crisis, understanding engine layouts will change how you look at every car on the road. So buckle up, quite literally, subscribe, hype the video because it is going to be hype, and let's get into dogging on engines. Starting with inline engines, the bread and butter of the automotive world. And there's a good reason why they've been around since cars stopped looking like horse carriages with motors bolted on. Picture cylinders lined up in a single row, like soda cans stacked side by side, all firing in sequence to push your car down the road. The inline layout is what you'll find under the hood of pretty much every economy car ever built. From your grandmother's reliable Toyota Corolla to that Honda Civic your cousin swears is a race car because it has a cold air intake. Inline engines come in various flavors, starting with the inline three-cylinder, which sounds exactly like what you'd expect from an engine that's basically missing a cylinder. These little guys are all about fuel economy and fitting into the tightest spaces possible, though they vibrate like a paint mixer and sound about as exciting as watching paint dry. Then you've got the inline four, the Swiss army knife of engines that powers everything from grocery getters to surprisingly quick, hot hatches. These engines are simple, cheap to manufacture and easy to maintain, which is why every mechanic on the planet can work on them blindfolded. The inline 5 is the weird middle child that sounds like a mix between a 4-cylinder and a 6-cylinder, most famously found in old Audi Quattros and Volvo wagons driven by people who think they're too sophisticated for a regular 4-cylinder but too practical for a V6. Finally, there's the inline 6, the gentleman's engine that BMW has been perfecting for decades. These engines are naturally balanced, smooth as silk, and produce a sound that makes grown men weep tears of joy. The downside? They're long, really long. Which is why you won't find them in compact cars unless the engineers want to put the radiator in the back seat. Inline engines are reliable, straightforward, and about as exciting as a tax return, but they get the job done without drama which is exactly what most people want from their daily driver. The engines are where things get interesting and wallets start getting lighter. Picture two rows of cylinders angled apart like a V-shape, basically two inline engines sharing the same crankshaft and a lot of attitude. The V configuration exists because engineers figured out that if you want more cylinders without making your engine longer than a city bus, you need to get creative with geometry. V engines are the peacocks of the engine world, all about power, presence and making sure everyone within a three block radius knows you're coming. The V6 is the compromise engine, offering more power than a four cylinder while still fitting in most engine bays and not completely destroying your fuel budget. You'll find V6s in everything from family sedans to sports cars, and they're generally smooth, refined, and capable of moving your car with authority. Honda perfected the art of making V6s that ref to the moon, while American manufacturers figured out how to make them sound like miniature V8s with anger management issues. Then there's the V8, the engine layout that built America's reputation for loving horsepower more than common sense. V8s are about as subtle as a marching band in a library, producing sounds that make people stop whatever they're doing and look around for the source of that mechanical symphony. From the small block Chevy that powered everything from Corvettes to pickup trucks to the modern marvels that somehow make 700 horsepower while still passing emissions tests, V8s represent the perfect balance between power and practicality, assuming your definition of practical includes being able to roast the tires at will. V10s are the overachievers, found in supercars and trucks that need to tow entire buildings. They sound like the automotive equivalent of an orchestra tuning up, all chaos and beauty mixed together. Finally, there's the V12, the ultimate expression of automotive excess and engineering mastery. V12s are what happens when car companies decide that money is no object and smoothness is everything. These engines are so balanced they barely vibrate, producing power delivery that feels like being pushed by a gentle giant who happens to make sounds that would make angels jealous. The downside to V engines is complexity, weight and fuel consumption that makes oil companies send thank you cards. But when you hear that first cold start rumble echoing off garage walls, all practical concerns tend to disappear faster than your savings account. Flat engines are the automotive equivalent of that friend who does everything differently, just to be unique, except in this case being different actually makes sense. 
Also known as boxer engines, these horizontally opposed designs have cylinders lying flat on their sides, punching left and right like boxers in a ring, which explains the nickname and why they sound like they're constantly having an argument with themselves. The most famous flat engines come from two companies that couldn't be more different if they tried. Subaru has built their entire identity around the boxer four-cylinder, creating engines that sound like a bag of hammers in a tumble dryer, but somehow manage to be incredibly reliable and provide a unique driving experience that's inspired cult-like devotion among owners. The Subaru Boxer engine sits low in the chassis, giving their cars a lower center of gravity that helps with handling, though it also means that when something goes wrong, your mechanic will charge you extra just for the privilege of lying on their back trying to reach bolts that seem to exist in another dimension. Then there's Porsche, who took the flat engine concept and turned it into automotive art. The flat 6 in a Porsche 911 is one of the greatest sounds in the automotive world, a mechanical symphony that builds from a gentle rumble to a screaming crescendo that makes you understand why people spend ridiculous amounts of money on sports cars. Porsche flat 6s are mounted in the rear, which creates unique handling characteristics that have been terrifying and thrilling drivers for over half a century. The engineering challenge of a rear-mounted flat 6 has led to some of the most advanced suspension and handling technologies in the world, all in service of making sure the car goes where you point it instead of backwards through the nearest hedge. The downside of flat engines is width and maintenance accessibility. These engines are wide, which limits packaging options and makes simple maintenance tasks feel like performing surgery in a phone booth. But the benefits of a low center of gravity, unique sound, and the bragging rights that come with owning something genuinely different make flat engines special in a world full of conventional layouts. Rotary engines are the mechanical equivalent of that one friend who's incredibly talented, but also completely unreliable and will definitely eat all your food. The Wankel rotary engine, named after Felix Wankel who probably never imagined his spinning triangle would become the stuff of both legends and nightmares, works like a Dorito chip spinning inside an oval chamber. Instead of pistons going up and down like every other engine on the planet, rotary engines use a triangular rotor that spins around, creating combustion chambers that constantly change size. This design allows rotary engines to be incredibly compact and lightweight, while revving to stratospheric heights that would make other engines explode into a thousand pieces. Mazda fell in love with rotary engines like a teenager falls in love with their first car, completely ignoring all the warning signs and red flags. The RX-7 and RX-8 became icons of the tuning world, capable of making incredible power from tiny displacement figures and producing a sound that's instantly recognizable, like a high-pitched scream mixed with the sound of a very angry sewing machine. The problem with rotary engines is that they consume oil like a drunk sailor consumes beer, require rebuilds more often than most people change their oil, and have seals that give up on life with the regularity of a quartz watch. The combustion chambers are shaped like crescents, which means they burn fuel inefficiently and produce emissions that make environmental regulators break out in cold sweats. Despite all these issues, rotary engines have a cult following that borders on religious devotion, with owners who will passionately defend their choice while standing next to a smoking pile of what used to be their engine. The rotary's biggest strength is also its biggest weakness. That spinning triangle creates incredible smoothness and allows for insane power density, but it also creates ceiling challenges that engineers still haven't completely solved after decades of trying. W engines are what happens when engineers ask themselves how they can fit the maximum number of cylinders into the shortest possible space while also making maintenance technicians question their career choices. The W configuration is essentially a double V engine, with four banks of cylinders arranged in a W shape that looks like someone took two V engines and squished them together during a particularly intense engineering brainstorming session. Volkswagen Group became obsessed with W engines during their phase of wanting to prove that German engineering could solve any problem, no matter how unnecessarily complex. The W8, W12 and the absolutely bonkers W16 found in the Bugatti Veyron and Chiron represent the ultimate expression of automotive excess and the kind of engineering that makes accountants weep openly. The W16 in particular is basically four inline-four engines sharing two crankshafts, 
creating a package that's more complex than most people's tax returns, but somehow manages to produce over 1000 horsepower while still being refined enough for luxury car duty. The benefit of W engines is their incredible power density and relatively compact length compared to a V12 or V16, which allows manufacturers to stuff massive amounts of displacement into cars that would otherwise need engine base the size of aircraft carriers. The downside is that W engines are heavier than a guilty conscience, more expensive to maintain than a yacht, and so complex complex that most mechanics would rather perform brain surgery than work on them. When a W engine works properly, it's smooth as silk and makes sounds that could make grown adults cry tears of joy, but when something goes wrong, which uh, it inevitably will, you'll need to sell a kidney just to afford the diagnostic fee. The W configuration represents peak automotive engineering excess, the kind of solution that exists simply because someone asked if it was possible, not because it was practical or necessary. Radial engines are the mechanical dinosaurs that once ruled the skies but now exist mainly in museums, and the fever dreams of aviation enthusiasts who think cars should sound like World War II fighter planes. Picture cylinders arranged in a circle around a central crankshaft, like the spokes of a wheel, with each cylinder firing in sequence to create a distinctive rhythm that sounds like mechanical thunder rolling across an airfield. Radial engines were the powerhouse of early aviation, spinning massive propellers and carrying brave pilots into combat, when engines were as likely to quit working as they were to keep running. These engines were built like tanks, designed to keep running even when filled with bullet holes and leaking oil from every possible joint. The few radial engines that made it into cars were usually the result of someone with more creativity than common sense, deciding that what the world really needed was a car that sounded like a Corsair fighter plane and got fuel economy measured in gallons per mile rather than miles per gallon. The radial configuration provides excellent cooling since all the cylinders are exposed to airflow, and they are incredibly robust, capable of running even when severely damaged. However, they're also massive, heavy, and completely impractical for automotive use, which is why you'll only find them in custom hot rods built by people who value uniqueness over practicality. The sound of a radial engine is unmistakable, a deep rumbling rhythm that builds to a roar as the revs climb, creating an auditory experience that connects you directly to the golden age of aviation. Modern radial engines in cars are essentially mechanical art pieces, conversation starters that exist to prove that just because you can do something doesn't mean you should, but sometimes the result is so spectacular that practicality becomes irrelevant. Electric motors represent the future that half the automotive world is desperately trying to embrace, while the other half clutches their internal combustion engines like security blankets and mutters about the good old days when cars had souls and made proper noises. Instead of pistons, cylinders, and controlled explosions, electric motors work through the magic of magnetism, with electric current creating magnetic fields that spin a rotor with the kind of instant torque delivery that makes traditional engines look like they're moving through molasses. Electric motors are ridiculously simple compared to internal combustion engines with only one moving part and no need for oil changes, tune-ups, or the complex dance of precisely timed explosions that make gas engines work. The placement of electric motors is incredibly flexible. You can have one motor, two motors, three motors, or even four motors, with each wheel getting its own personal motivation device for the kind of all-wheel drive control that would make a rally driver weep with joy. Tesla proved that electric motors could be fast, really fast, with the Model S Plaid producing acceleration that makes supercars look sluggish, while also being quiet enough to sneak up on pedestrians like a two-ton ninja. The instant torque delivery of electric motors means there's no waiting for turbo lag or revving to the power band, just immediate, relentless acceleration that pushes you back into your seat with the consistency of gravity itself. The downside is that electric motors lack the character and soul that comes from controlled explosions, no rumbling idle, no exhaust note that makes your neighbors either love you or hate you, just the barely audible whine of electric efficiency. Battery placement becomes the new engine layout consideration, with heavy battery packs typically mounted low in the chassis for optimal weight distribution, creating a fundamentally different approach to automotive design that prioritizes efficiency over the mechanical symphony that has defined cars for over a century. Hybrid engines represent the automotive world's attempt at having its cake and eating it too, combining the instant torque of electric motors with the range and refueling convenience of traditional internal combustion engines. Toyota pioneered this approach with the Prius back in 1997. 
creating a car that was simultaneously revolutionary and absolutely despised by anyone who thought cars should make noise and look cool. The original Prius looked like it was designed by someone who had only heard cars described over a bad phone connection. With aerodynamics that prioritized fuel economy over any consideration of visual appeal. Early hybrid systems were primarily about fuel efficiency, using small electric motors to assist tiny gasoline engines during acceleration and to capture energy during braking that would otherwise be lost as heat. The Toyota Hybrid Synergy Drive became the template that everyone else copied, with a planetary gear system that seamlessly blended electric and gasoline power while making sounds that confused mechanics who were used to engines that actually sounded like engines. Modern hybrid systems have evolved into incredibly sophisticated powertrains that can operate in electric-only mode for short distances, gasoline-only mode for highway cruising, or combined mode for maximum acceleration. Performance hybrids like the McLaren P1, LaFerrari and Porsche 918 Spyder proved that hybrid technology could enhance performance rather than just improve fuel economy, using electric motors to fill in the gaps where internal combustion engines traditionally struggled, like instant low-end torque and eliminating turbo lag. The complexity of hybrid systems means they have both the potential reliability issues of electric motors and batteries, plus all the traditional problems of internal combustion engines, creating a maintenance nightmare that makes mechanics charge premium rates just for the privilege of diagnosing which of the two powertrains is currently malfunctioning. If you liked this explaining video, feel free to check out my other ones on the channel, because I explain them in the most Chad way possible. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you, well, liked the video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.